Testing, one, two, three, test, test. It looks like we are live. Greetings and salutations. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Hopefully everybody is well. Let me get my computers going here. Get us all on track here for the 11th day of Christmas. The 11th day of Christmas. Episode number 47, Happy Chandler. The 12 days of Christmas, the 11th day of Christmas, is in progress at this time. I smell oysters. No oysters in this house. You must be smelling oysters somewhere else there, Bibster. <laughs> all right. Let me get this all loaded up here. It's a spinning. We've got three watching. We've got four thumbs up. We are doing good. And boom. Whoa. To Bipster was here early. Two Fanatics was in at 12.30 with the early bird. So we got two fanatics, two fanatics. We've got Big Ray, we've got St. Louis Cardinals fan 1990. We've got two fanatics. Chuck Debris. I see Chuck hiding out in there. Chuck Debris. Lock in 99. Two fanatics. Chuck Debris. Lock in 99. Cardinals fan 1990. That looks like five different people in the stream so far. All right, two fanatics has got his six. Six freebies. We've got Big Ray. I see one. Let's see. Do I only see one Big Ray here? We got one Big Ray. I see Chuck Dupree has his freebies. Lockin has one. Let's see, Lockin has one. So that's two entries. Chuck Dupree has his six. Four, five, six. Big Ray. Let's see, I think Big Ray only had the one. Happy Christmas Eve, everyone, at 1237. I don't see any other big rays in here yet. Ring that bell and give a thumbs up, please. Bells, bells, bells. Oh, you mean the bells? I'm not ringing the coffee, the coffee bell. This is the this is the the ringing the bells. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up for me. Okay, so we've got lock of ninety nine. Two fanatics. Chuck Dupree's got his six. Uh, let's see. Big Ray only has the two so far. Lock and 99. I believe he, Lock and 99 is up to one, two, two so far. You got to text something else really, really quick there. We got till 110 and then we're going to get rolling with our content today. We got a lot to go through today, that's for sure. As you can see on the lineup here, we got the Hall of Fame Friday here. Then we've got, that's part one, and part two is the, the Bomb Ball Repack Fairfield Box. Then we've got a Baseball 2021 Update Series. And then the finale for today, along with all the other goodies we'll be doing, is Big Ray. There was, there's a Big Ray again. Big Ray's got a couple more to go. He is good to go now for his six freebies. 
Good to go there, Big Ray. Just got to see Lock and 99, St. Louis Cardinals fan. Nope, only St. Louis Cardinals fan has one entry, so that counts for two. And Lock and 99 has got one, two, three. Lock and 99, you are good to go with your six free entries. So the only one is St. Louis Cardinals fan. And we will be good to go, but everybody's got about two, a little over two more minutes. Let's see. Dot, 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 dot. St. Louis Cardinals fan, one, two. Let's see. St. Louis Cardinals fan has two. It was my mistake there, but I don't see any more by St. Louis Cardinals fan yet. Okay, so St. Louis Cardinals fans got four free entries. I see another chat before 110. Uh, decorating cookies today. Baby Jesus was a cute baby in the manger. There we go. There we go. <clears throat> I bet you shouldn't be betting on Jesus there. <laughs> you shouldn't be betting on Jesus there. There are two, two fanatics, vintage collectibles. You could have said, I'm sure baby Jesus was a cute baby in the manger. No betting allowed on this channel. And yes, we uh, we just finished. Well, my wife is in the process of getting the baby Jesus birthday cake ready for tomorrow. We do that every year. We have a baby birthday. Uh, a, a baby Jesus birthday cake every year. It's a tradition we started with our kids, which was really nice. Who just said that? I bet. Oh, that, that's the one you said up there before. Okay. Betting on Jesus is a sure thing. No, you don't want to bet on him. Betting, it's gambling. And gambling's, well, even though when you get baseball cards, it's a gamble too, isn't it? And away. Don't play with your food, Big Ray. <laughs> All right, so we got about two minutes, but let me start getting the names into the Wheel of Names. Let me know if Cardinals fan comes in by 110 while, I'm, while I jump out of the chat here for a minute and get the, uh, so we are at 540 entries so far. And then we're going to get ready to go here on We'll get ready to go on getting these names added in, and then we'll get into our 11th day of Christmas from our... Uh, hold on a second. Let me get this in order here real quick. Okay. And our first order of business will go through the 12 days of Christmas song for the 11th day, which is today. This is our 11th day of Christmas live streams consecutively. Uh, happy holiday, happy birthday, Jesus. Happy holiday, Scorty box of tops, rip box 2021. So excited. There we go. That's what we like to hear. Scorty box of tops holiday. That is pretty cool. So let's go in here really quick, and let's see, uh, Jcam, you got yourself uh, four entries into our December giveaway. Jcam. J-A-C-A-M has got four. All right, Jay Thompson snuck in under the wire with two entries so far at 1210. Jay Cam got, there we go. St. Louis Cardinals fan made it in with his six. Uh, dot, 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 dot. Jay Cam has got his six, five and six. And then we've got uh, Jay Thompson snuck in under the gun. Jay Thompson with two entries just when time expired. Jay Thompson. Let me get your entries in here, Jay. All right, got to fix a uh, happy channeler there. Yes, you made it in just in the nick of time. Uh, 
Hey Cam, thanks, but I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Jesus is like Coca Cola. He is the real one, baby. <laughs> All right, so let me get it. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people in with their free seven entries today. So let me go get these guys added in here. Remember also, keep it in the back of your mind. We are doing Christmas carols. So for any Christmas carol that's requested out of my Christmas carol book, um, if you can see those, if you're on a cell phone, you, I'll, I'll read through it in just a minute here. Two entries is enough. Don't want too many entries. <laughs> All right, so let's see. We've got Lock and 99. We've got two Fanatics. Let me get your six entries here real quick. Two fanatics, lock and ninety-nine. All right, we gotta get Big Ray, St. Louis Cardinals fans, nineteen ninety. Uh, Chuck Dupree, Jake Cam, and Jay Thompson. Let me go through real quick here. Chuck Dupree. Let me get Chuck's in here real quick. All right, Chuck, I got yours going in the books right now. I think we might be close. No, maybe not. But we'll be pretty close to uh, 600 entries by the time we're done today, I think. So Chuck Dupree, Cardinals fan, Big Gray. Okay, let's see. Cardinals fan, uh, Big Gray. J. Thompson. Oh, here we go. Here's Big Ray and J. Thompson right here. All right. Copy these two in here for J. Thompson and Big Ray. All right. We got J. Thompson and Big Ray. Big Ray. Jay Thompson. I gotta get St. Louis Cardinals fan and J Cam. Let me do J Cam because I don't know if you've got any entries yet. Okay, let me get J Cam in here real quick. One. Two, three, J Cam, then I'll go back and get St. Louis Cardinals fan. Okay. Taking me so long to get all these entries in here. All right, we got J-Cam. Last but not least, St. Louis Cardinals fan, 1990. Okay, where are you at, St. Louis Cardinals fan? I know you're up here. Dun, dun, dun. One more, come on, I know there's another one with more. Maybe not. Let me see, go up a little bit farther. Okay, guess not. We'll go with this one. This two spot. And copy it and paste it three times down on the bottom of the list there. Do -do 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 -do. I think that's going to put us at about 380 or 582. Let me see real quick here. And then... Oh, 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 oh.
There we go, 582 entries in the December Wheel of Names. Okay, let me go over some other announcements to include in our information here. All right, so again, we've got a $2 Super Chat, which counts for $2 Super Chat by Two Fanatic Vintage Collectibles. It came upon a midnight clear. We will be getting to that here shortly. Uh, that'll be my first carol that I'll sing in just a minute here. Uh, it came. Okay. And we'll see. That's why I want to start early, because I figured I might get some requests for some singing today. Not that I'm the best singer in the world, but I do love Christmas. It is my favorite holiday of the year. But I'm going to get do one announcement real quick here. So, so far, um, I've got two confirmed entries. Um, I think three. Wait, no, three. One, two, three. I think I've got three Christmas cards back from the 60 that are included in the Christmas card contest that will be picked for a winner. Um, 20 January... 2022. The Christmas card contest will be uh, drawn at that time. I sent out 60 Christmas cards to 60 of my faithful YouTube subscribers and people that have interacted with me, some that are in the YouTube channel and have bought from me from eBay. So uh, I want to be able to give back a little bit to my community. So if you got a Christmas card from me in the mail, Please send me a Christmas card my way in the mail with my little uh, my little logo, my little logo sticker. But you see, sometimes me put me putting on my uh, packages and things like that. But there's a mini one included in your Christmas card, and if you send me a Christmas card back with that little sticker, you will be included in my Christmas card giveaway. So far, the three confirmed that have sent back to me is Jonathan Myers, Gourmet Breaks, and uh, Scudder's Garage. He's a local for me here in Arlington, but those are the three confirmed so far that I've uh, Uh, have received a Christmas card from. So once I receive a Christmas card from you, you'll be included onto my Christmas card giveaway wheel of names. And so that's what that's one announcement I wanted to give. The other one is, um, again, if you give me a super chat, and I probably should stipulate it and have you followed the rules? Last, yesterday I kind of gave a little, oops, okay. But do a favor, and if you give a super chat, put the title in the super chat that you give of the name of the Christmas carol you want me to sing. Okay? So, uh, the 12 that are listed in my book here is the ones I'm using. And it's uh, Silent Night, The First Noel, Joy to the World, O Little Town of Bethlehem, Away in a Manger, O Come All Ye Faithful, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear, While Shepherds Watch Their Flocks, Go Tell It on the Mountain, and We Three Kings. So real quickly here, let me get a uh, bipster, and just don't forget it, I guess, it's not like it's a bad word. Okay. Uh, what happened? Did I miss something earlier? But let me get two fanatics, $2 super chat, which turns into four more entries on the wheel. And so that will give us now um, 586 entries 
I am going to uh, do the 12 days of Christmas first. Then I will do Fipsters. Um, or I should say two fanatics. His uh, song request from his super chat. Okay. So for today, the 24th of December, Christmas Eve. On the eleventh day of Christmas, my true love sent to me eleven pipers piping, ten lords a-leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids a-milking, seven swans a-swimming, six geese a-laying, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. So tomorrow morning we will have the end of the song. And we will have the 12th day of Christmas. Again, I'm going live tomorrow morning early on Christmas Day at 7.30 a.m. my time, Pacific Standard Time. So you will know the difference as to what we are there. Just discussing the difference be from the phrase jumped on the bus and what I said. Oh, okay, gotcha. Thanks, Jay. Um, ba, 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 ba. Okay, I see what's going on. Yeah, subbed. Yeah, just, just kind of say hopped on the bus there. YouTube kind of frowns on when they see things like that. And it all has to do with analytics and how they've got the rules and regulations set up on YouTube. So don't feel like you're being picked on when somebody says that to you and stuff. But um, that is it for the freebie entries. I can put that out of the way. I can put this up here. And then, um, did I make a note? Oh, yeah, I did make a note. Let me set this over here for now. So, Bipster requested it came upon a Midnight Claire. That is number nine in my book here. All right, so for number nine, for Bipster here, it came upon a Midnight Claire. Okay, will be our, our first Christmas carol from the request, request a Christmas carol super chats. So it came upon a midnight clear. It came upon the midnight clear. That glorious song of old from a angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men from heaven's all-gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled. And still their heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world. Above its sad and lowly plains they bend on hovering wing. And ever o'er its back Bull sounds the blessed angel sing. For lo, the days are hastening on by prophets seen of old. When with the ever circling years shall come the time foretold, when the new heavens, earth 
shall own the Prince of Peace, their King. And the whole world sent back the song which now the angels sing. There you go. Uh, what's it? Faith, family, sports, hello, Donald. Hope everyone is having a good day and Merry Christmas tomorrow. Can't stay, but just wanted to stop in and say hi. God bless. God bless you there, Aaron, and your family. Hopefully you all have a great Christmas also. Uh, I did forget one thing. Forgot to push the button on the Santa camp to get it rolling. Let's see. Oh, I think I got it set up the wrong way there. Got to tip it that way so you guys can see the Santa cam, keeping an eye on things here. All right, so it is Hall of Fame Friday. And before I do get started, I am going to take a sip of water, but let me get ready and set up here for our biography for our Hall of Fame person today. And that is Happy Chandler. Happy Chandler. You're thinking, who is Happy Chandler? Well, I do have a baseball card from Topps. This is from uh, 2019 Topps, and he was one of the commissioners of baseball, along with some other sundry duties throughout his illustrious career. Let me get a drink of water real quicker. All right, we've got four people watching. We've got 10 thumbs up, so that's pretty good. We got up to double digits on the thumbs up before 1.30. We are doing well. Let me refresh the chat real quick. And thank you there, two chiefs, or two fanatics, vintage collectibles, for uh, thanking me for a great job on that hymn, or that Christmas carol, all right? But let's get into this so we can get through the biography and start getting into gripping and ripping some cards. How's that sound? So Happy Chandler. Albert Benjamin, commonly known as Happy Chandler Sr., was born July 14th, 1898, and passed on on June 15th, 1991. Was an American politician from Kentucky. He represented Kentucky in the U.S. Senate and served as its 44th and 49th governor. Aside from his political positions, he also served as the second commissioner of baseball from 1945 to 1951 and was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1982. His grandson, Ben Chandler, later served as congressman for Kentucky's 6th district. A multi-sport athlete during his college days at Transylvania College, Chandler briefly considered a career in professional baseball before deciding to pursue a law degree. After graduation, he entered politics and was elected as a Democrat to the Kentucky St Senate in 1928. Two years later, he was elected lieutenant governor, serving under... Governor Ruby Lafoon. Chandler and Lafoon disagreed on the issue of instituting a state sales tax. And when Chandler, the presiding officer in the state Senate, worked to block the legislation, Lafoon's allies in the General Assembly stripped him of many of his statutory powers. The tax then passed by a narrow margin, knowing that Lafoon would try to select its own successor at the Democratic nominating convention. Chandler waited until LaFoon left the state, leaving Chandler as acting governor, and called the legislature into an enact a mandatory primary election bill. The bill passed, and in the ensuing primary, Chandler defeated LaFoon's choice, Thomas Ray. He then went on to defeat Republican King Swope, by the largest margin of victory for a Kentucky gubernatorial race at the time. As governor, Chandler oversaw the repeal of the sales tax, replacing the lost revenue with the new excise taxes and the state's first income tax. He also enacted a major, a major or reorganization of state government. 
realizing significant savings for the state. He used these savings to pay off the state debt and improve the state's education and transportation systems. Uh, convinced he was destined to become President of the United States, Chandler challenged Senate Majority Leader Alvin Barkley for his U.S. Senate seat in 1938. During the campaign, Frank, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt came to the state to campaign for Barkley, and Chandler lost a close race. The following year, Kentucky's other senator, Marvel Mills Logan, died in office, and Chandler resigned as governor so his successor could appoint him to the vacant seat. A fiscal conservative and disciple of Virginia's Harry F. Byrd, Chandler opposed parts of Roosevelt's New Deal and openly disagreed with the president's decision to prioritize European operations in World War II over the war in the Pacific. <clears throat> in 1945, Chandler resigned his Senate seat to succeed the late Kenshaw Mount Landis as Commissioner of Baseball. His most significant action as Commissioner was the approval of Jackie Robinson's contract with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Effectively integrating Major League Baseball, he also established the first pension fund for Major League players, earning him the title the Players Commissioner. Baseball owners were upset with Chandler's governance, however, did not renew his contract in 1951. Following his term as commissioner, Chandler, Chandler returned to Kentucky and won a second term as governor in 1955. The major accomplishments of his term were enforcing the racial integration of the state's public schools and establishing a medical school at the University of Kentucky, which was later named the Chandler Medical medical center in his honor. Following his second term as governor, his political influence began to wane as he made three more unsuccessful runs for governor in 1963, 67, and 71. His endorsement of dark horse candidate uh, Wallace G. Wilkinson was seen as critical to Wilkinson's successful gubernatorial campaign in 1987. Wilkinson later resisted calls to remove Chandler from the University of Kentucky Board of Trustees following Chandler's use of a racial epithet during a board meeting in 1988. In his retirement, Chandler made numerous public appearances and remained active in state politics and events. Chandler died a month before his 93rd birthday. At the time, he was the oldest living former Kentucky governor as well as the earliest serving former governor. All right, as far as his early life, Albert Benjamin Chandler was born in the family the farming community of Cordon, Kentucky in 19 1898. He was the eldest child of Joseph Sweet and Callie Saunders Chandler. Chandler's father allegedly rescued his mother from an orphanage and married her when she was 15, but no record of their marriage has ever been found. In 1899, Chandler's brother, Robert, was born. Two years later, their mother, still in her teens and unable to cope with raising two children, abandoned the family. She fled the state and left her sons with their father. In his autobiography, Chandler said that his mother's leaving them was his earliest memory. Years later, he sought his mother, he sought his mother and found her living in Jacksonville, Florida and had married again and had three half-siblings. His full brother, Robert Chandler, died when he fell from a cherry tree when he was 13 years old. <clears throat> Let me pop in the chat real quick here. Have uh, election pin from an election of his. That's cool. Hey, St. Louis Cardinals fan, Merry Christmas to you also. Uh, I am 1991. Oh, in 1991, you were one year old. <laughs> Transylvania College is a neat place in Kentucky. Uh, they have a stone wall of stacked river rocks that is 15 miles long. They give tickets to anyone moving a flat stacked rock along the highway. Ah, okay. <laughs> Good afternoon. Hey, ladies. Oh, there we go. Scudder's Garage. You 
do have your entry in the Christmas card give, giveaway contest. So you will be involved in that for sure. You refresh the chat here and continue where I left off. Um, <clears throat> ta -ta -ta -ta. After a year, uh, Chandler was not able to afford Harvard. Oh, wait, no, wait. Da, 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 da. I'm, I think I'm up here. Okay, Chandler was raised by his relatives, and by age eight, he virtually supported himself financially from his paper route and doing odd jobs in his community. In 1917, he graduated from Corden, Corydon High School, where he had been captain of the baseball and football teams. His father wanted him to study for the ministry, but Chandler instead entered Transylvania College, now Transylvania University, in Lexington, Kentucky. <coughs> it was there that he received his lifelong nickname, Happy, because of his jovial nature. He paid for his education by doing chores at the lo for the local citizens. Chandler was captain of Transylvania's basketball and baseball teams and the quarterback of the football team. He was a teammate of Dutch Meyer, a future member of the College Football Hall of Fame. He also joined the Phi Kappa Alpha fraternity and the Omicron Delta Kappa Honor Society. In 1918, during World War I, the United States Army started a student officer's training corps at Transylvania, and Chandler began training to be an officer. The war ended before he was called to active duty. Uh, in 1920, in 19, 20, 1920, Chandler pitched a no-hitter for Grafton, North Dakota's team in the Red River Valley League. He attended a professional baseball tryout at Saskatoon, but did not make the team. He returned to Transylvania and received a Bachelor of Arts degree in 1921. He then signed with the Class D baseball team, the Lexington Reds, where he was a teammate of future Hall of Famer Earl Combs. <clears throat> Briefly considering a career in baseball, he finally decided to study law. He entered Harvard Law School that same year, paying his way by coaching high school sports in Wellesville, Wellesville, Wellesley, sorry, Massachusetts. His former team, Charlie Moran, then coaching the uh, Center. Uh, College Praying Colonels football team in Danville, Kentucky, asked him to scout the national powerhouse Harvard Crimson, an upcoming opponent for center. Uh, Chandler took copious notes for Moran and centrate defeated Harvard 6 to nothing in what was considered one of the greatest upsets in college football history. After a year, Chandler was not able to afford Harvard. He returned to Kentucky and continued at the University of Kentucky Law. College of Law, coaching high school sports in Versailles, and served as head coach of the women's basketball in University of Kentucky in 1923. He was an assistant coach to scout for Charlie Moran at center, and he coached the freshman football team there. A member of the Order of the Coif, he received his Bachelor of Laws degree in 1924, and he was admitted to the bar the following year and opened his law practice in Versailles. <coughs> On November 12, 1925, Chandler married Mildred Lucille Watkins, a teacher at Margaret Hall School for Girls. They would have four children, Marcella, Mildred, nicknamed Mimi, Albert Jr., and Joseph Daniel. Mimi Chandler played one of the Four Singing Sisters in the 1944 film, and The Angels Sing, appearing with Dorothy Lamour, Betty Hutton, and Diana Lynn, before abandoning acting and working for the Kentucky Department of Tourism. For the next five years, Chandler simultaneously practiced law and high school sports and served as a scout for center. He joined numerous fraternal organizations, including the Freemasons, Shriners, Knights of Templar, uh, 40 and 8, and Optimistic International. All right, he did have a, in his early political career, Chandler entered politics 
when he was named chairman of Woodford County Democratic Committee in 1928 and was appointed Master Commissioner of Woodford County Circuit Court. In 1931, Gubernatorial elections approached and Chandler and Prestonburg native Jack Howard were mentioned as candidates for lieutenant governor. U.S. Representative Fred M. Vinson backed Howard, a fellow Eastern Kentuckian, but politician, political bosses Billy Kerr, Johnson and Cameron Jr. and Ben Johnson supported Chandler. The support of another political boss, Mickey Brennan, gave Chandler the edge of the, at the party's nomination convention. Shortly after the election, the divide, the divide between Chandler and Lafoon widened over the issues of impending a state sales tax. That was discussed earlier. His first term as governor. After Beckham declined to run for governor, the anti lafoon Act supported Chandler against Ray. During the primary campaign, Chandler seized upon the unpopular sales tax labeling Ray sales tax Tom and calling on the elect electorate to redeem the state from the Ruby, Ray, and Ruin. In the first round of the primary, Ray uh, gamered 200, 203,010 votes to Chandler's 189,575. Frederick A. Walls received 38,410 votes and Ella Huddleston received 15,501. The votes for Wallace and Huddleston meant that neither Ray nor Chandler achieved a majority, which triggered the runoff primary. Both Willis Huddleston backed Chandler in the runoff, and Chandler defeated Ray by a vote of 260,573 to 234,124 to secure the nomination. And we go down here to his appointment on October 9, 1939, following the death of Senator Logan. Chandler resigned as governor, elevating Lieutenant Governor Keen Johnson to the governorship. The following day, Johnson appointed Chandler to Logan's vacated seat in the Senate. In a special election to fill the remainder of the unexpired term, Chandler then first defeated Charles R. Farnsley in the Democratic primary and Republican Walter B. Smith by a vote of 561,151 to 401,812 in the November 5, 1940 general election. Although he never forgave Roosevelt for backing Barclay in the 1938 senatorial primary, he generally supported the Roosevelt administration except for parts of the New Deal. Then his role when he became commissioner of baseball. After the death of baseball's commissioner, Kensaw Mountain Landis in November of 1944, John O. Gottlieb, a friend of Chandler in the U.S. War Department, suggested Chandler be a successor. Baseball owners who had been afraid of their players would be made eligible for the draft during the war eligible for the draft during the war had decided that their new commissioner needed to have skills and influence to represent baseball's interests in Washington, D.C. As a senator, Chandler had advocated on behalf of baseball during the war, which endeavored him to the owners. Furthermore, the commissioner's $50,000 annual salary, about five times that of a U.S. senator at the time, proved a significant enticement, and so he agreed to be considered. Other candidates being considered included National League President Ford Frick, Democratic National Committee Chairman Robert E. Hannigan, uh, former Postmaster General James Farley, U.S. Senator John W. Bricker, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, former Federal Judge Fred M. Vincent, Ohio Governor Frank Lachesi, and Undersecretary of War Robert P. Patterson, after Cincinnati President Warren Giles and Chicago Cubs owner Philip K. Wrigley raised a strong opposition to Freck, who had been under the front runner 
New York Yankees co-owner Larry McPhail and began to advocate for Chandler. When the owners met in Cleveland, Ohio on April 24, 1945, a vote for a new commissioner, Chandler's name was not on the shortlist, which had Frick, Farley, Hannigan, Vinson, Vache, and Patterson. None of the candidates received the required two-thirds majority after lobbying by lobbying by McPhail and New York Giants owner Horace Stoneham. The owners took an informal vote to see if anyone had potential to be elected. Chandler's name appeared in the top three on each of the 16 ballots. Encouraged, the owners had then held another formal vote. After two ballots, Chandler received the necessary majority. A third vote was taken to make the choice unanimous. Chandler remained in the Senate for several months after his election as commissioner because he wanted to cast his vote on the Bretton Woods Monetary Agreement and the Charter of the United Nations. He received only his Senate salary until his resignation November 1st, 1945, despite claims to contrary by the press. Nevertheless, his delay in assuming the commissioner's job upset many team owners as did his late arrival to Game 3 of the 1945 World Series, which rendered him unavailable to rule on whether the weather was uh, clement enough to begin the game. Many owners believed that Chandler had been attending a political meeting, but he had actually been at a Detroit Athletic Club luncheon, where he was representing Major League Baseball. Chandler's election was also met with disdain from much of the press in the eastern United States, where most of baseball's teams reside at the time. His southern draw and his willingness to sing My Old Kentucky Home with very little encouragement uh, led some sports writers to opine that he was too undignified for the office. Others resented his folksy political style, calling him a preening politician, the Kentucky windbag, uh, and a handshaking, baby-kissing pra practitioner of the arts. Chandler further alienated the press by moving the commissioner's office to Cincinnati from Chicago in 1946. Shortly after the Mexican League incident, Robert Murphy, a former negotiator for the National Labor Relations, attempted to organize the Pittsburgh Pirates into a guild for purposes of collective bargaining. Murphy dec decried the reserve clause in the player's contract, which gave the team owners unlimited control over the player's services, and he demanded more rights for players, including the rights for contract and the right for salary arbitration. Chandler worked with Pirates officials to avoid a threatened strike by the players. Part of Chandler's intervention included organizing a team of replacement players as a contingency plan. The team would have included Honus Wagner, then 72 years old. The Defections to the Mexican League and the threat of a strike by the Pirates prompted owners to form an advisory committee chaired by Larry McPhail to suggest needed changes that would calm the disconnect among the players. On August 27, 1946, the committee presented a draft a draft, a document outlining the changes. Language in the original draft admitted that baseball was operating as a monopoly and that racial bias was the sole reason for segregation in baseball. Baseball's attorney stripped the controversial language from the version that was eventually adopted by the owners. Base breaking baseball's color line. Days prior to Chandler's assumption of the commissionership, the Brooklyn Dodgers general manager, Branch Rickey, had announced the signing of Jackie Robinson to a minor league contract with the Montreal Royals, making him the first black man to play for a major league baseball affiliate. The following year, Ricky transferred Robinson's contract from sorry, 
Montreal to Brooklyn, effectively breaking baseball's color line. In a speech at Wilberforce University in February of 1948, Ricky recounted a secret meeting that he allegedly had between held had been held by baseball officials at the Blackstone Hotel in Chicago on August 28, 1946. At the meeting, Ricky claimed that Ford Frick disseminated a report that stated, however well-intentioned, the use of Negro players would hazard all physical properties of baseball. According to Ricky, all 15 team owners, except for, the team, for him, voted to endorse the report. Ricky exclaimed, Frick mal maliciously meticulously collected all copies of the report at the end of the meeting to prevent them from being disseminated. Baseball's historian Bill Marshall later wrote that the document and subsequent vote on which Ricky was referring was the advisory committee's initial draft of the recommended reforms. Uh, Marshall further recorded that Ricky identified the meeting and the report shortly after his speech at Will. Wilberforce and retracted his claim of 15 to 1 opposition to Robinson's entry into Major League Baseball. Uh, Chandler, who was also allegedly at the meeting, made no public mention of it until 19, a 1972 interview. The interview Chandler then corroborated the essentials of Ricky's story, but he placed the meeting at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in January of 1947. He also recounted that later in 1947, Ricky came to his home in Kentucky to discuss the matter further. According to Chandler, Ricky professed that he would not move forward with Robinson's transfer unless he had Chandler's full support, which Chandler later pledged. Aside from Chandler's antidote, which he frequently repeated after the 1972 interview, there is no evidence that his meeting with Ricky ever took place. Nevertheless, the future baseball commissioner, Bowie Kuhn and Washington Post sports writer Bob Addy maintained that Robinson would not have played without Chandler's intervention. Uh, that Chandler supported Robinson and the racial integration of baseball is evidenced by his actions during the 1947 season. First and foremost, his commissioner Chandler had the power to void Robinson's contract, but he chose to approve it. Further, after extreme uh, race-based jeering at Robinson by the Philadelphia Phillies and their manager, Ben Chapman. Chandler threatened both the team and Chapman personally with disciplinary action for any future incidents of race-based taunting. After that season, he decisively supported Ford Frick's decision to suspend indefinitely any member of the St. Louis Cardinals uh, who followed through on their threat to strike again against racial integration. <clears throat> as far as other matters, during the 1946 postseason, rumors began to swirl that Yankees owner Larry McPhail was lobbying Brooklyn Dodgers manager Leo DeRocher to leave the Dodgers and manage the Yankees. The move angered Dodgers owner Branch Rickey, who encouraged Chandler to begin an investigation into the gambling habits of DeRocher and his associate, actor George Raft. In the offseason, Chandler and DeRocher had a meeting. Chandler counseled DeRocher to abandon his gambling. Branch Rickey charged Chandler with maintaining a double standard. However, when the commissioner took no action after seeing McPhail with two known gamblers, at a Yankees-Dodgers pre-season exhibition in Havana, Cuba. McPhail then signed two Dodgers assistant coaches, Chuck Dressen and John Corden, as aides to Yankee manager Sorry. Uh, Bucky Harris. Well, they were still employed by the Dodgers. I was making sure I was not too far behind on the chat. Chandler suspended Dressen for 30 days and levied a 
$2,000 in fines against McPhail and the Yankees. The Yankees-Dodgers feud continued in the New York newspaper throughout the offseason. Ch charges were levied by both sides, including accusations that DeRocher was a philanderer because of his alleged involvement in with married actress Lorraine Day, which ultimately resulted in Day's divorce. When DeRocher subsequently married Day, a local Catholic priest declared that attending Dodgers games was a venial sin. Prompted in part by this declaration, Chandler suspended DeRocher from baseball for a year just days before opening day, citing conduct detrimental to baseball. <coughs> All right. So it does say he did a second term later after being commissioner as a governor again. In 1955, he was in a gubernatorial campaign. Then he was governor of Kentucky, I believe, for a spell. We'll go over all these closing stats. And then later in life, 1957, Chandler was one of 10 inaugural members of the Kentucky Sports Hall of Fame, a vestryman at St. John's Church in Versailles and he was awarded the Bishop's Medal of, a, of the Episcopal Church in 1959. On January 3, 1962, Chandler opened a campaign headquarters in Frankfurt, announcing his bid for an unprecedented third term as governor with the slogan ABC, Albert Benjamin Chandler, in 63. And his opponent in the primary was Edward T. Ned uh, beat it, Jr., the choice of outgoing Governor Bert Combs. All right, so that there, most of his time was spent as a, 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 a politician. So let's go over his bio in a, in closing, basically. Uh, gotta go by and Merry Christmas. How you doing there, Dearman? Hi, Uncle Don. I'm here with my dad's girlfriend, Nephew watching. Oh, okay, your dad's girlfriend. Nephew watching. Okay, that sounds good. All right, so Happy Chandler, 44th and 49th Governor of Kentucky. He was in office from December 1955 to December 8, 1959. Uh, he was a uh, lieutenant governor to Harry Lee Waterfield, preceded by Lawrence Weatherby, succeeded by Burt Combs, and then in office from December 10th, 1935 to 39, Lieutenant Ken Johnson, preceded by Ruby Lavin, succeeded by Ken Johnson. He was a United States Senator from Kentucky in office October 10th, 1939 to November 1st, 1945, preceded by M. M. Logan, succeeded by William A. Stand Phil and he was again the second commissioner of baseball in office from 19. November 1st, 1945 to July 15th, 1951, Kinsaw Mountain Landis is who he preceded, and he was succeeded after him by Ford Frick. Uh, he was a 36th Lieutenant Governor of Kentucky in December 8th of 1931 to December 10th of 1935. Governor Ruby Lafoon, preceded by James Brenhut Jr., and succeeded by Keen Johnson. He's a member of the Kentucky Senate from the 22nd District in office from January 8, 1929 to December 8, 1931. His personal data, he was born in Albert Benjamin Chandler on July 14, 1898 in Corydon, Kentucky. Uh, da, da, da. He died June 15, 1991 at the age of 92 in Versailles, Versailles Kentucky. Resting place, Pigsaw Presbyterian Cemetery in Versailles, uh, Kentucky. Political party, he was a Democrat. Spouses, Mildred and Lucille Watkins. In 1925, he had four children, relatives, Ben Chandler, grandson. Alma mater, Transylvania University, Harvard Law School, and University of Kentucky. Occupation, he was a politician and lawyer. His allegiance, of course, to the United States, his branch or service when he served in the military from 1918 to 1990 was in the United States Army and he served during World War One. His baseball career 
Uh, he was, he's a member of the National Baseball Hall of Fame. He was inducted in 1982 by the Veterans Committee. So there you have it. Happy Chandler's uh, induction into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Hopefully you all enjoyed, enjoyed that. I had this one baseball card of him. Happy Chandler says, I remember thinking I'm going to have to meet my maker someday. And if he asks me why didn't I let this guy play, and I said because he's black, he that might not be a satisfactory answer. On the back it says, Revolution of the Game. Happy Chandler, when he was uh, Commissioner of Baseball. This is a Topps 2019 card. Uh, Chandler served as a U.S. Senator and the Governor of Kentucky before becoming the second Commissioner of Baseball in 1945. Two years later, he advocated for the signing of Jackie Robinson and supported the social pioneer in his debut. Happy also staved off significant competition from the Mexican League. So there you go. And then this was his uh, Hall of Fame induction plaque at Cooperstown. This is from a postcard set that they make. I've got a complete set of uh, Hall of Fame induction postcards in a binder. One of these days I'll probably do a, a special on that and show you all the postcards. All right, da, 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 da. let me uh, refresh the chat here. Don't look like I've mitched, missed, mitched, missed much. Uh, let me get a drink of water before we move on to our next part, which is going to be the Blomdahl box from Left Behind Times. All right. Put those back where they belong. And New Year's Eve, we will have episode number 48. Who's after Happy Chandler here on my master list? Uh, Oscar Charleston. Oscar Charleston will be next. Let me go ahead and mark uh, these two off. So I don't make a mistake. So Oscar Charleston will be our next Hall of Famer down the road here for um, episode number 48, which will be the 48th Hall of Famer in my list of all the baseball Hall of Famers. Okay, but let's go ahead and we're gonna again we're gonna do the the Blumball Blumball box from Left Behind. Then we're going to do the Baseball 2021 Update Series. Anybody that remembers before, what I did was I pulled an SSP Derek Jeter in my first update box from the Navy Exchange that I bought. We were out Christmas shopping, and I got permission to buy a couple of these. So I did. That's the only update I'll probably get this year. Um, and then after that, we'll open up the 2021 Tops Holiday Mega Box and see what ornament we get out of here. And then I will be taking a picture of my ornaments or doing a video of our house when it's all lit up for Christmas, maybe tonight. It's going to be a spur of the moment video. So, and I'll take you around our decorated Christmas house for the holidays for, for Christmas. So, we're going to do this first, then the update. Then the holiday mega box. So without further ado, let me just scooch these up like this out of the way for now. So I got a little bit more room for the cards. Let's see, how's he got this one taped up? See if I can see how much tape I can salvage off the bottom of this box. Oh my word, someone on Ethan's Facebook group pulled another one a big head Otani. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. 
I have a big, big head Ripken, I think, that I got from, I can't remember what it, back in the day when they were doing big head baseball cards. Believe it or not, it was a thing at one, one point in time. <clears throat> so it's not something new that they've done. I believe it was back in the 90s, the early 90s, I think, was when they did some big heads. Think I, I think I've got one of Ken Griffey Jr., but I just don't know for sure. But uh, let me get this last piece of tape off. I'm trying to be careful here because I want to use these Carefield or the Blom Doll boxes for a project coming up in 2022 on my channel. Along with the junk, uh, the Walk Off Wax, the Walk Off Wax, I think that I can't remember the name of the company before, but I've got a whole bunch of those boxes too. All right, so let's see what we've got here. All right, we've got an empty box right now. We will do the pack last. Uh oh, we've got a, a penny sleeved. Looks like we've got a 1991 Ultra Flare here. And we got a Ken Griffey Sr. A Ken Griffey Sr. All right, that puts my... Uh -oh. Let's see. I think I'll put that down here. That's all right. I know. I don't even know why I did that. I was going to do that later, but we'll do it now. That's fine. All right. So let's go through these cards real quick. And let's see what we pull out of this. And we'll do the, the pack here last. There. You like how that magically jumped? Because my screen's all froze up. So we got Ken Griffey Sr. with the Atlanta Braves. Ken Griffey Jr. That goes in my Ken Griffey Jr. We've got uh, Dante Bichette, Dante Bichette, Bo Bichette rookie card, Edgar Martinez Hall of Famer, Felix Hernandez, Seattle Mariners. Now we've got uh, Johan, uh, Johan Ramirez, Series 1, Spencer Torkelson, we go, Spencer, Spencer Torkelson. Oh, there's that Cal Ripken Jr. Put that Cal Ripken Jr. over there. Evan White with the Seattle Mariners rookie card. Boom. Uh-oh, there we go. I don't collect, but it, they are my team for sure. Is the Seattle, I do have a good stack of Seattle Seahawks going on there. So Lofa Tatupa with the Seattle Supersonics. Uh, this is a, uh, he put a gold on there to make sure I remember and can see that the gold from a uh, 2017 Tops, Edwin Encarnacion. Okay. Then we got a, a Pete Alonzo. We got a Mr. Met wearing a mask, opening day 2021. Let me go my 2021 hold out. And we got a, a backwards card. Ooh, that's a sharp looking card there. What do we got here? An autograph card for Tampa Bay. Serialized short print type card. My, my word. Yeah. Hold on, let me scoot this out of the way for now. I'm going to have to make some room here. I'm out of space. Give me a penny sleeve here. The top loader for this autographed short print card. All right. For Jacob Jeffries. Okay. And that's our an autograph card out of this. Then what is this one here? This is a oh wow. That is uh, pretty interesting. A Johnny Wyratzek. That is interesting. It's almost like it was perforated and came off of something, that's for sure. And then we got this one here, Kellogg's 3D Superstars. 
Who's this? Oh, Michael Calvin Norris. Michael Calvin Norris. And then who do we got here? We've got the shot heard around the world. The shot heard around the world. It says, uh, the Giants win the pennant. The New York in New York City, October 3rd, 1951, and arguably the greatest pennant race in baseball history, the New York Giants won the 1951 National League Championship on the final swing of the season, trailing the rival uh, Brooklyn Dodgers by 13 and a half games at one point. Boom. That's a pretty cool card. Then we've got a Hank Aaron. Aaron slams the Cardinals. Lou Gehrig. Lou Gehrig. Hall of Famer. Harmon Killebrew. Let's see. here. Do, what do we got here? Then and now. Then and now. For Heritage. We have a heritage hold, hold out there, but that's that's Gaylord Perry. Is he a Hall of Famer? Perry, yep, Gaylord Perry is a Hall of Famer. So put that in my Hall of Fame. Satchel Page. Satchel Page. Rookie card for Joey Bart. Joey Bart. Uh, Justin Dunn, Tops Heritage. J.P. Crawford, Tops Heritage. Kyle Seeger, Tops Heritage. Tops Heritage, Kyle Seeger again. Matt Noakes with the New York Yankees. Channel favorite. Channel, oh my word. Channel favorite. We got another backwards card, and that's a, oh my word, another a Bowman Chrome autograph. Blue, Ryan Zink. Ryan Zink. I get this one. This goes into my autograph collection. We have a top load, so two autos in this blown ball box. Oh my word. Oh my word. Two autos in here. New York Yankee and a Tampa Bay Rays. And then who do we got left here still on the box? We got a, a Kyle Lewis. Uh, Kyle Lewis goes to my Kyle Lewis collection. Oh my word. Boy, that fine time to just load me up here in, the, in these Blumball boxes. Best best care, best Fairfields around. CV Baseball Card Collector. How you doing there, brother? Thanks for popping into the stream here. Appreciate you being here. Kyle Lewis, rookie card. Our Gold Cup card, not a rookie card. Then we got a Ronald Acuna Jr. in action, Tops Heritage. We got a Randy Lurch with the Philadelphia Phillies. A Greg Gross with the Philadelphia Phillies. Oh, we got a flag card. We know where that one's going to go. Then we got a Russell Wilson with the Seahawks. The Seattle Seahawks. Goes in that stack. And Ichiro. So we got our Griffey, got our Cal Ripken Jr., we got an Ichiro, we got a Shohei Otani with the Angels, top Heritage, we got a Mike Trout, Mike Trout, that's 2020 update, I have the complete set of 2020 update, Cal Ripken Jr., Cal Ripken Jr. and last but not least another Ken Griffey. Ooh, that's a nice one. That's a what brand is this one? Anybody know? It's got the MC on the front. Ken Griffey Jr. though, so that goes in my Ken Griffey Jr. collection. Boom. All right. So pretty good cards in this one. Let's see what's in this Fleer '91. Repack from Levine. <clears throat> uh oh, got this one taped up pretty good. This repack 
is a repack, in case you're wondering, for some of those that have never seen these before from Left Behind Times. So this one's got a Lee Tinsley Mariners outfielder, a rookie card, Seattle Mariners, a Tino Martinez with the Seattle Mariners. Well, this is a 93 flare, but that was a what pack was this? 1991 flare pack. <laughs> Left Behind. Bill Hasselman with the Mariners. Another Bill Hasselman. Just let the true Fairfield. Got some doubles in there. Bill Hasselman. Bill Hasselman. Eric Hansen. Eric Hansen. Eric Hansen. Lee Tinsley with the Mariners. Rookie. Fernando Vina with the Mariners. Fernando Vina. More doubles for a popular Fairfield look. David Wainhouse. David Wainhouse. David Wayne House. Oh, boom. Boom, boom. A Ken Griffey Jr. 1993 Ultra Flare. That is pretty cool. Thank you there, Blake. Let behind times. Appreciate that very much. Let me make a stack of these right here. See, I'll put the baseball on, or football on the bottom. Put the autographs on top of that. We got a Matt Noakes, a channel favorite. We got a 2021 opening day. We got some stars. All right. We got a Seattle Mariners. Kyle Lewis will go in my Kyle Lewis collection. We got my Mariners for a Mariners holdout. And we've got a USA flag. I know who this is going to get sent to. This will be sent to somebody in the channel. That individual knows who they are. Still haven't got an update on how, how he's doing with collecting some of these cards. Then we've got some Hall of Famers here. We got some an Ichiro here. We got how many Ken Griffey Juniors did we get out of this box here? One, two, well, oh, I had him in the rock stack. Two Cal Ripken Juniors. And one, two, three, uh, Ken Griffey Juniors. Here's a, a woman. And a two. For anybody that knows, I'm a, a big Ken Griffey Jr. collector and a Cal Ripken Jr. Collector, along with Ichiro and any Seattle Mariners and you name it, most of my regulars know exactly who I collect. So let me set that off in the back here. Now we're going to go into our next round of openings for our 11th day of Christmas. We're going to open up this uh, 2021 um, baseball update series hanger box 67 cards packs with a special insert may contain only 60 to 65 cards so let me get uh, get a little knife here let's see we got four people watching 13 thumbs up doing pretty good there if you like the way they Put plastic on the container boxes to keep them secure. You know that it's a sealed box with the plastic on it. So let's open up the box on the side here. We kind of scoot this into the next next position on the round here. That will be next after we do the the hanger box here of 67. We've got a pack here and we'll do it like in usual fashion. We will take the, the insert card and put them on the bottom of the pack here as we go through. That way we'll look at all the hits and all the good stuff at the end, except for if there's a, an insert or a short print card somewhere in the middle of the pack. Which you can't tell sometimes until you get to it. So let me put uh, 
that half down there for now. Actually, let me put it right over here. Let's start going through these this these 67 cards, see what we can find. Pip, <laughs> two fanatics, vintage collectibles, has got his milk and cookies there. Getting ready for Christmas Eve. Jake Cave with the twins. Our face cards go right here. Uh, Aaron Savali with the Indians. Boom. Luis Torres with the Seattle Murders. All right. Then we've got a Gilberto Celestino with the Twins rookie card. Um, da, 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 da. Why are you freezing like that? Uh, Darren Ruff with San Francisco. And we've got uh, Jock Peterson with the Cubs. Uh, Mark Melancon with San Diego. Jorge Guzman with the Marlins. Uh, rookie card. Um, Steve Brault with Pittsburgh. Uh, Matt Beattie with the Dodgers. Uh, Tyler Ivey, rookie card for the Astros. Uh, Merrill Kelly with the Diamondbacks. Uh, Tony Watson with the Angels. Uh, Jake Cronenworth, rookie debut card and gold cup card for the San Diego Padres. Goes in the middle there. Rookie and gold cup. Uh, Miles Straw with the Astros. Again, my first update card, our update series uh, hanger box I got from the Navy Exchange had this super super short print um, Derek Jeter card and I did sell that on eBay I started it as a 99 cent auction and I got seventy nine dollars and seventy six cents for that card easily paid for the the 995 boxes that I bought at the exchange these three Hanger boxes was only thirty dollars, so I got my money back. So these boxes were like free. That was really nice. Uh, Garrett Whitelock rookie card for the Red Sox. Um, Carlos Hernandez with the Ro for the Royals rookie card. Uh, rookie combos: Justin Lawrence and Lucas Lucas Gilbertson for the Co Colorado Rockies. Then we've got a uh, Taylor Rogers for the Minnesota Twins. Uh, Daniel Ponce de Leon, Ponce de Leon for the Cardinals. Uh, Kyle Gibson with the Rangers. Uh, Jace Peterson with the Brewers. Um, Alex Manoa, rookie card for the Blue Jays. Uh, Taylor Trammell, rookie debut card. For the Seattle Mariners, April 1st, 2021. That's my second Seattle Mariner now. Then we've got a Jose Trevino with the Rangers. Got a uh, Cam Gallagher. Cam Gallagher with the Royals. We got uh, Daniel Hudson with the Nationals. Uh, Aaron Hicks with the Yankees, Aaron Sanchez with the Giants, and Adolis Garcia with the Rangers. So nothing earth-shattering out of that first half of the box. Let's check the second half of the box here. I don't see a thick card that I know of in here, but we'll see what we get on the end here with the insert cards. Ryan Hendricks, rookie card for the Reds. Uh, Michael Taylor with the Royals. Um, Nate Pearson, rookie debut, July 29, 2020 for the Blue Jays. Okay, saw a little sneaker there. Uh, Colton Wong with the Brewers. Andrew Vaughn with the White Sox, rookie card. Um, Teal 
Tom with the Pirates, rookie card. Uh, Cesar Hernandez with the Indians. Uh, Trevor Lark, or Larnich with the Twins, rookie card. Uh, Kyle Farmer with the Reds. Uh, J.B. Bukaskas with the Diamondbacks, rookie card. Oh, uh-oh, Bipter got into the cookies again. Bipster has gained weight this Christmas. <laughs> Bipster, you eating too many cookies. Uh, Sean Doolittle with the Reds. Uh, Haskar Yanoa, rookie card for the Atlanta Braves. Let's continue up here. We got to flip the cards over a little bit. And probably got to flip up now. Ooh, I see a card from my other collection there. Uh, Jackie Bradley Jr. for the Brewers. Alan Trammell, rookie card for the Seattle Mariners. So three Seattle Mariners, that's pretty good. Uh, Sam Huff, rookie debut, September 11, 2020. Rookie card for the Rangers. Uh, rookie debut, August 14, 2020. Luis Garcia with the Nationals rookie card. Martin Maldonado with the Houston Astros. Key Brian Hayes, rookie debut, September 1st, 2020, rookie card. Uh, Jordan Luplo with the Cleveland Indians. Uh, Khalil Lee, rookie card for the Mets. Alex Manet. Uh, Victor Gonzalez, rookie card for the Dodgers. Alex Reyes with the Cardinals. Supporting up. Thank God for something. Uh, Bryce Wilson with the Braves. Um, then we've got next here, we've got uh, Adam Frazier with the Pirates. Uh, Wade Davis with the Royals, Garrett Stubbs with the Astros, Tyler Alexander with the Tigers, Boom Chris Flexen with the Seattle Mariners. Don't know that one for sure, but it's an update, so it must be a new player for the Mariners. Might have seen him once or twice this the end of the season. Um, Patrick Weagle with the Brewers rookie card. Uh, Andrew Kins... Kninsner. Is it Kninsner with St. Louis? Yeah, Andrew Kninsner. Kninsner. Wow, what a name. Uh, okay. And then we've got a Yep, yeah, that's the Rainbow Falls. We got a Rainbow Fall here. Marwin Gonzalez with the Boston Red Sox. Not numbered the Rainbow Foils, huh? Out of 2021. Then we've got a Casey Mize with the uh, Detroit Tigers rookie card. Insert. 1970 design. <coughs> That's 70 design? I don't think that's 70. It's just the 70. Uh, must be the year. Yeah, 70 years. Then we've got the uh, Alec Manoa rookie card for the Blue Jays. 1986. Look. Now we got a Casey Mize with the Tigers which is a 1992 style. A Jacob de Grom with the Mets. A Yadier Molina with the Cardinals. And a Joey Bart rookie card. So the four 1992s at the end there. So nothing earth shattering. I'll have to check through later, see if there's any short prints in here somewhere along the way. 
these little numbers are on the back are too hard to see. Okay, so we've got the base cards down here for this hanger box. Then we've got the, the rookie cards. So go in my update stack actually, so but I will have to check, see if I got I got a gold cup here. We got our Seattle Mariners here. We got our rainbow foil here. We've got the 1992 style there, the 1986, and the 70 years of baseball subset, card number 56. So not too bad for that hanger box. Let me put these off to the side here, along with keeping this box for later use. Okay, put you up there. Uh, okay, let's see. This one here, I'm going to put here. For tomorrow's Christmas. Alright. So, let's see, we can put this away. Because the holiday is not going to have any Hall of Famers in it. So, boom. Get ready to finish off today's 12 days of Christmas. What do we got here? Three watching? Let's see. It looks like two two fanatics is here. Let's see if what my list says here. Participants. Who's still? Well, nobody. I know there's at least, it says three people watching. So there's at least three people watching the stream. Let me get a sip of water. Let me get a sip of water and we will get ready to to grip and rip this holiday box okay and I will be opening this I'm gonna I'm gonna watch Kevin's video before I go live in the morning because he said it's gonna be up for a I'm not gonna be up at 4 a.m. but since we're doing the live stream at 7 30 I'm gonna watch his video before we go live tomorrow and then I'm gonna depending on what the video tells me to do with this. It says, after viewing the video, you can open this pack. It feels like it's something in a top loader, that's for sure. So, we'll have to see what the video says. But we're going to open up this last holiday box. Because tomorrow we're going to open um, the collector card, Santa Claus Around the World for a little bit different type of content on the 12th day of Christmas since it will be a Christmas stream on Christmas Day we're gonna do the Christmas around the world because remember by the time I get ready to do that live stream in the morning Santa Claus would have already made his rounds so we will see we're gonna see what ornament we have in here so I can put the ornament on my Christmas tree before I do my video tonight do it at some point or another tonight before I go to night night land. <laughs> so without further ado, I think these ornaments are right underneath the flap here if I remember. No. It's right inside here. I see it. So here's our ornament. We'll pull our ornament out. It's a Dodger. It's Corey Seeger for the Dodgers is our ornament for this stream. So let me put the, the Corey Seeger ornament right there. We'll put Corey Seeger right there. Let's get our our 10 packs out of the box. Okay, let me pre-stage the box for putting the cards back in when we're done. Right. We will put this here. Oh. There we go. Alright. So now we've got we've got our 10 packs here. And we'll be getting ready to rock and roll here now. 
Okay, so we've got our 10 packs. Why is my webcam doing this? I don't know. You need to work. You need to work properly. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Am I freezing up on your end, guys? Is this, does the screen keep freezing up for some reason? I don't know what on earth is going on here, but let's go through these. Gotta, gotta keep my hands moving, but I'll just keep them up here. How's that sound? I don't know what's going on with my, my hand. But you gotta keep an eye on these cards for the short prints because these cards are so busy. You have to pay attention and see what's on their card. So we got Zach Wheeler with the Phillies. We've got George Springer with the Blue Jays. We got Taylor Trammell, rookie card for the Seattle Mariners. All right, that's our first Seattle Mariner there. All right, next we've got a uh, Victor Robles with the Nationals. Oh my word, we got a Xander Bogarts with a Chris, this is a short print with a Christmas hat on. Xander Bogarts has got a Christmas hat on. So let me set this in a uh, penny sleeve. Tells me it's a short print of some sort. Kind of gives me a little reminder there. Okay. Let's see who else we got here. We've got a Ha Seung Kim San Diego rookie card. Like I said, these are very busy. You have to pay attention. Trevor Story with the Colorado Rockies. And then we've got uh, Debbie Garcia, rookie card for the Yankees. We got Freddie Freeman with the Atlanta Braves. And we've got Jazz Chisholm, rookie card for the Miami Marlins. All right, moving on to pack number two. Might be the relic or an autograph of or something. We'll see. Nope, it doesn't look like there's a thick card in here. So maybe we'll end up finally getting an autograph after all these boxes. Uh, Garrett Crotchet with the White Sox rookie card. Gotta look through the picture to see if it's a short print or not on these. Uh, Francisco Lindor with the Mets. Okay, we've got John Nagowski, rookie card for the Pirates. Boom, we got the Kyle Lewis Holiday Gold Cup card. And we did get our first metallic. It looks like maybe it's going to be the even packs. This is the second pack. So we do got a Kyle Lewis here. Kyle Lewis, get him top loaded for my Kyle Lewis collection. Okay. So two Seattle Mariners so far. The uh, Taylor Trammell and a Kyle Lewis. And we've got our first uh uh, metallic Steven Strasburg with the Nationals. Then we've got a uh, Gilberto Celestino with the Twins rookie card. We got a uh, Key Brian Hayes rookie card for the Pirates. We've got Marcus Stroman with the Mets. We've got Max Kepler with the Twins. We got Cody Bellinger with the Dodgers. Okay. Pack number three. No, not freezing now. Looks good. Okay. No Vanna and pack tonight. Bahamba. Oh, yeah. I seen some news alert where the uh, that mistake they did on. Uh, what was that? Wheel of Fortune, um, 
the car company had decided to give that lady a car anyway, even though they said that she didn't win it on a technicality. Uh, so the car company felt bad, and they were in a giving mood, I guess, and decided to give her a car after all. That was pretty good. That was pretty pretty nice of them. Uh, Elvis Andrus with the Athletics. Then we got a uh, Jared Kelnick rookie card. So another rookie for the Seattle Mariners. And a Gold Cup card for Kyle Lewis. Then we've got um, Xander Bogarts with the Red Sox. And we've got uh, Bobby Dalback, rookie card for the Red Sox. We've got Jose Ramirez with the Indians. We've got uh, Brandon Lowe with the Tampa Bay Rays. We've got Eric Hosmer with the San Diego Padres in his camo shirt. Then we've got uh, Andrew Young with the Diamondbacks rookie card. Frozen. Huh? Uh, Zach Granke with the Houston Astros. And Braylon Marquez with the Cubs rookie card. No individual Gold Cup cards yet, but that's okay. Next, we've got uh, two, four, six, pack number four. Pack number four in the 2021 Holiday Mega here. Let's see what we got here next. We've got uh, Wilson Contreras with the Cubs. we got to look real quick through the busyness of the pictures to see if it's a short print. Jose Barreos, Barreo with the Reds, rookie card. Uh, Jared Walsh with the Angels. Gold Cup card. There we go. I found a Gold Cup card. I might have missed one, but you know what? Down the road, they will get caught because I'll be put organizing these cards that I got in these three boxes. Nolan Arenado with the St. Louis Cardinals. We've got our second metallic card. It's Juan Soto. With the Nationals, I don't see anything Christmassy hiding in there that I can see. So that is our second metallic card in the fourth pack. So it looks like it's following a pattern. So then we'll get the, the sixth and the eighth and the tenth. The last pack should have a metallic. Clayton Kershaw with the Dodgers. Uh, Delvin Williams with the Brewers. Gold Cup card. Uh, Trey Mancini with the Orioles. Um, Jose Barrios with the Blue Jays. And Carlos Correa with the Houston Astros. All right, moving on to pack number five. How you doing there, Lockin? And two fanatics. I think maybe I got two people interacting in the chat. Okay. That's okay. Uh, Bur Byron Buxton with the Twins. Um, Yerman Mercedes with the White Sox rookie card. Boom, and that popped out of nowhere. Jeff McNeil with the New York Mets is our relic card. So no autographs out of Topps Holiday from, uh, what did we do? Uh, 16, 17, 20, or 19, 20, and 21. Only relics were available. Only relics. My, oh my. But that's okay. Something is better than nothing. So at least a snowball relic for the New York Mets, Jeff McNeil. Okay. Next we have here is Kohei Arihara with the Rangers rookie card. First time I've seen that one. Oh, the... 
Yeah, I think all the relics are the snowman style. That's the only ones I've seen so far, is the snowman relics. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Remember, it's not just words. Be blessed. Are you leaving me, Bipster? Oh, my word. First, I don't get his Christmas card in the mail yet. Then he abandons me on Christmas Eve. I don't know what he's up to these days. I'm losing all kinds of faith in my favorite Bipster. Two Fanatics Vintage Collectibles, have a good night. And to all a good night. Uh, Joey Votto with the Reds. Uh, Tarek Skewball, rookie card for the Tigers. Joe Odell with the Angels, rookie card. And Jose Devers with the Marlins, rookie card. Brownies, brownies, and more brownies baking. There are some with Santa hats instead of the snowman. Oh, really? There is some with Santa hats instead of the snowman. Oh, okay. A Santa hat relic? That's different. Yeah, I've never, I've never, maybe that's the less common one to find. Unless they're just about 50-50. I don't know. Don't want to burn them. Oh, okay. So you're not taking off for the night yet. You're still going to hang out with us for a few more minutes, right? Just got to check on the brownies, make sure they don't burn, huh? Um, actually, this should be a, this is pack number six. We should have a uh, metallic in this pack. Uh, Brandon Belt with the Giants. Um, Nick Solak with the Rangers. And we've got a uh, J.D. Martinez with the Red Sox. We've got a Albert Pujols with the Dodgers. And we do, we have a metallic guard. Lurtz Guriel with the Blue Jays is our third metallic guard. I don't know why I did it that way. So we have two Washington Nationals. And then we have a Toronto Blue Jay. All right, Fernando Tatis Jr. with the Padres. Uh, Clark Schmidt with the Yankees rookie card. And we got Pete Alonzo with the Mets. Uh, Brent Honeywell Jr. with the Tampa Bay Rays rookie card. And... Sixto Sanchez, rookie card for the Marlins. Pack number seven coming up. Happy birthday, Jesus. There we go. All right, next pack, pack number seven. Zach McKinstry with the Dodgers, rookie card. Bo Bichette with the Blue Jays. Jesus Aguilera uh, with the Marlins. Uh, Zach Birdie, rookie guard for the White Sox. Uh, Jose Ramirez with the Indians. <clears throat> We've got uh, Jonathan India, rookie guard for the Reds. I don't know why I put him over there. He's not a rookie. Um, Hunter Dozier with the Royals. Um, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. with the Blue Jays. Uh, Araldo Perdomo with the Diamondbacks rookie card. And Kyle Hendricks with the Cubs. All right? Should be our next. Pack, pack number eight for our metallic guards. Okay. So let's go here. Uh, Victor Gonzalez with the Dodgers rookie card. Um, Javier Baez with the Mets. 
Spencer Howard with the Rangers rookie card. <coughs> Take a sip of water after this. My voice is getting raspy. Catel Marte with the Diamondbacks. And our metallic is a New York Yankee this time. Corey Kluber with the Yankees. Then Armin Marquez with the Colorado Rockies. Chris Sale with the Red Sox. Aaron Nola with the Phillies. Uh, we got uh, Jake Cronenworth with San Diego. Rookie card and Gold Cup card on the same card. And Luis Camposano with San Diego rookie card. All right. Pack number nine, next to last pack. So maybe we'll get something good in the in the last pack magic from the last holiday mega we got here. Sometimes you look at the side and it looks deceiving that you might have another relic, but it's not. Uh, Travis Blankenhorn with the Mets, rookie card. Uh, Marcus Simeon with the Blue Jays. And we have seen getting two uh, short print cards in a box. Had one yesterday with two short prints. Marcus Simeon with the Blue Jays. Uh, DJ LeMayhew with the Yankees. Uh, Sam Huff, rookie card for the Rangers. Um, Christian Yelich with the Brewers. Then we've got Nick Madrigal with the Cubs, rookie card. We got Trevor Rogers with the Marlins, rookie card. We got Reese Hoskins with the Phillies. No, the red sleeve. The red sleeve don't count, I don't think. Oh, that's a 420. 420. Um, Isaac Paredes. He's got a he's got a blue sleeve, but that's just there. Yeah, pitchers keep keep the pitchers arm warm. Uh, Paredes rookie card for Detroit and Starling Marte with the Oakland Athletics. So now we're moving on to our final pack, which will for sure most likely have our fifth metallic card our fifth metallic card so last pack magic last pack magic let's see if we can get anything good out of the last pack here okay no thick card that I can see We've got Nolan Aaron or, or Nolan Arenado and Charlie Blackman with the Colorado Rockies. Um, Tyler Glasgow Gla Glasnow with the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, Trevor Lonarch with the Twins rookie card. Uh, Shohei Otani with the Angels. And our last metallic card is an Anthony Rizzo with the New York Yankees. So we got two Yankees, two Washington Nationals, and a Toronto Blue Jays for our metallic cards. Shane McClanahan, rookie card for the Rays. We've got a Jackie Bradley Jr. with the Milwaukee Brewers. We've got a uh, Corey Seager with the Dodgers. And uh, Jason Hayward with the Cubs. And Chris Bryant with the San Francisco Giants for our last card in the box. All right. Almost drawing to a close here. We will put uh, my ornament that we got in this box, Corey Seager, 
I, I'm trying to remember for sure. I might have got a Corey Seeger last year. I'm almost positive. So it could be, I could I could have a Corey series duo coming up in a possible auction near you one day. But that will go on the Christmas tree. Let me set that over here for now. That won't go back in the box. So we did get a Jeff McNeil Snowman Relic card. We got uh, three Seattle Mariners, uh, Jared Kelnick, uh, Taylor Trammell, and a Kyle Lewis. Okay, double check on the Kyle Lewis. I think I got one in my collection, so I could probably put this to see if I can get a complete set. And then next up, we've got here, we've got, uh, we just set that there for now with the other Kyle Lewis. And if I have the update Kyle Lewis, I can leave that in for the, for the update set. Put these guys here. Actually, I'm going to put that one there. And this one here. And I can always separate them out later if I need to. So we got the snowman, we got the short print, we got the metallic guards on top, then we got the rookies. The rookie's supposed to be over here. Rookie gold cups and the base cards. Rookies, relic, all that, just putting these back in the box so I know where everything's at for now. I'll put this in the 2021 box here. Oops, Kevin's, Kevin's package I'm going to open up tomorrow is right here. Unless it says to open it a different way on the video. But it's going to be on standby here either way. And I'll get the two boxes. We're going to, oh, actually no, it's probably going to be the one box. Okay, put these back in the box here for later separation and sorting on that. And let me get uh, real quick before we do finish up here. I'm going to set this aside till tomorrow. Let me get um, what we're going to open tomorrow for our Christmas morning opening. So you can see at least at least see the box we're going to open tomorrow in the street. Okay. It'll be, I'm looking forward to this one ever since I got it when I got out of the hospital. So this has been a long awaited Christmas package. So we move this out of the way. I should have put that over there when I brought this over here. So this is what we are going to open tomorrow. Santa around the world. It says Santa around the world. Premier edition collector cards, 22 karat gold certificates, and Santa foil cards randomly inserted for Santa. And it shows you some designs on what's available in this set and what country the Santa Clauses are from. I think I looked it up online. I think you might be able to complete a set in one of these. It requires all 72 cards for the assembly of the puzzle. So it looks like on the back of the cards is going to be a, a design that you can complete the puzzle. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, eighteen, twenty-two, seven, thirty-six, forty-five. 54, 63, 72. Yeah, 72 puzzle pieces. So there's 36 packs and 8 cards per pack. So what's 8 times 36? 8 times 36. Anybody know the math on that one real quick? I'll do it. 8 times 36 equals 288 cards we should get out of this box. 
and I think it's a 200 card set. I can't remember off the top of my head. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think so. I think so. So we'll see what we get tomorrow in the Santa around the world. And how fitting to finish the 12 days of Christmas after Santa has already made his trip around the world. Because by the time I get up in the morning, that means for us in this part of the world, there we go, 288. Thanks, Air Lockin. Um, so yeah, we'll be looking forward to opening up these packs and this box right here. Okay, the Santa Around the World Collector's Card include 72 cards plus 12 Santa Fall cards with historical backgrounds on different Santa figures. So it says 72 different Santas from the, from the 1870s to the 1950s. That is pretty cool. I'm looking forward to this tomorrow. This should be a fun set to, to open and hopefully put together and then have some that I can put for sale on my eBay channel. Why are we typing numbers? Uh, somebody wasn't paying attention. Somebody came back and said, why is there 288 there? 784? Uh, I don't know about 784. There's only going to be 288 cards here tomorrow while we open it up. But that's okay, Bipster. Okay, last chance for any Christmas, closing Christmas carol. And last chance. We got that. That's pretty good. Four people watching, but 14 thumbs up. So we did pretty good. I gotta get busy with my wife and we gotta make some more Christmas cookies tonight for our Christmas dinner tomorrow. And we are gonna have some fun. So other than that, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. Except for, we'll be looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Tomorrow, in our uh, 12th day of Christmas. We'll be closing off the 12th day of Christmas um, so there, yeah, no, no I'll say it because it said on the side of the box here, not on this side, oh, 36, 36 packs and eight cards per pack. So I'm just trying to see how many cards. So if we have 288 cards, I think we should be able to complete a set of cards, in which case then we would have, let's see, how about 72 or 288 divided by 72. How about that one? I wonder if I can complete more than one set out of this box. I don't know. That would be interesting. 288 divided by 72 equals. Well, yeah, I guess if we didn't have the foil cards, but it says to complete a set, you have to have, um, I think it on, on the other side it says here, there's 72 cards in the set, plus 12 Santa Fall cards with historical backgrounds on different Santa figures. So we'll see. We'll see what kind of set or sets we can build with one box. So I'm going to leave this right here till tomorrow's show. And I'm going to get ready to close things up here today. So I can give my voice a rest and be ready for tomorrow. So tomorrow will be the last chance for um, any super chats for uh, Christmas carols. So come prepared for that if you want to. I'll be willing to sing some Christmas carols and we will open up this box and see if we can complete at least one set if not two. I'm not going to put the sets in order tomorrow. I'll do that and I can give you a recap next Monday probably. Or no, Tuesday. Tuesday. So other than that, <coughs> I think that's all I can think of for now. Hopefully everybody is doing well. Um, but yeah, that's what we'll do.
So this has been Don Blondo, Hall of Fame Veterans, Sports Cards and Collectibles. Having been live to you this 11th day of Christmas on Christmas Eve 2021. In case you're watching the replay here. As to why am I wearing my Santa shirt and my Santa cap, singing Christmas carols. It's the 11th day of Christmas, and tomorrow will be the 12th day of Christmas, and then I'll go back to my regular schedule of Tuesdays through Saturdays. Are you going to sing love songs for Valentine's Day? I don't know about that bit, sir. I don't think so. But good try. <laughs> Christmas is my favorite time of year, so I don't mind singing the Christmas songs. We have our song leader in our church that does not look forward to taking Christmas song requests out of our hymnals in Christmas time. So this is my way of getting my Christmas time in when if requested by you guys. But I might do we'll see what happens tomorrow. After all, it is going to be Christmas, right? So this is Don Blondo Hall of Fame Veterans Sport Cards and More. Having been live to you with our Hall of Fame Friday, episode 47, Happy Chandler, and the 12 days of Christmas, the 11th day, along with Left Behind's uh, Blomball Box, we did a Topps 2021 update hanger box, and we did the 2021 Mega Box from Walmart for the holiday cards. So this was a blessing. And as Bipster says at the end of all his videos, it's not just words. As always, be blessed. And Merry Christmas. Let me ring my jingle bells before I sign off here. We'll see you all tomorrow morning, 7.30 a.m. I'm going to try and do it right on spot. You'll be getting your entries into the, the December giveaway. Oh, yeah. Did I ever tell you how many entries we do currently have? 586. So I'm almost positive that we'll go over. Uh, I'm pretty positive we'll go over um, 600 tomorrow. I think that'll be pretty much my my most names I've had on my wheel of names. My oh my. What an interesting thing. If we could get up to 700 by the end of the month. 777 would be beautiful. But yes, you all take care. Have a wonderful and blessed Christmas Eve and we will see you all tomorrow. Same bat time. Same, no, not same bat time. It'll be at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. 10.30 a.m. Pacific Coast or Atlantic Coast Time for Bipster out there or Two Fanatics Vintage Collectibles and wherever you are in between. So 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'll be doing our 12th day of Christmas tomorrow. Okay, so take care. Have a wonderful Christmas Eve. Spend time with family if you're able to. If not, that's what phones are for. Give them a call. Wish them a Merry Christmas. Do it while you can. Because there will be a time coming down the road. Like I know, the older I get, the less people you'll be able to reach out to and say, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. As those that we've loved pass on before us. So take care, Lord bless you, and we will see you tomorrow morning. Bye for now.